things you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for All About Android is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of All About Android is brought to you by Netflix. Watch thousands of TV episodes and movies streamed to your PC, Mac, or TV instantly. Plus, get DVDs by mail in about one business day. For your free 30-day trial, go to netflix.com slash twit. Monday, May 2nd, 2011, and welcome to Episode 6 of All About Android, your weekly source for the latest news, hardware, and apps for the Android faithful. I'm Eileen Rivera. I'm Jason Owl. And I'm Ron Richards. And we're in the same clothes. What, yes. what are you talking about? What? I don't know what you're don't, talking about. I just I really like this. this shirt. I really wanted to wear this again. <laughs> don't ruin the mystery. <laughs> yeah, you're peeling back the curtain. <laughs> don't do that. We're not supposed maintain to the that. mystery. I maintain like the mystery. to peel back the curtain because <laughs> I just want to explain we're recording this a little bit early. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's we're my fault. recording in the future. Mm-hmm. No, that's true. in the past for the future. In Something the past like for that. the future. But you're getting it on the same day. So the live you people know the difference. are like, yes, two shows, and then they'll be sad on Monday when we're not here. Yeah, they're gonna be going through withdrawals. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But everyone else that just downloads, they won't know the difference. <laughs> unless right. you watch the show and wonder, why are they wearing the same clothes? <laughs> I just I'm love glad, this cardigan, let me tell you. I'm glad we addressed this clothes issue up front. Like we didn't, I really yeah, wanted to come clean <laughs> because I didn't want an email saying, why did I leave wearing the same clothes in two different episodes? You guys must really like those clothes. Why did Ron and Jason wear the same? Boy, why did they wear the same clothes two weeks in a row? It's like that Seinfeld episode where he goes out with a girl twice and she wore the same outfit and he wonders, <laughs> does she have other clothes? Is it like a uniform? What there is you this? go. See, I didn't want it to be a Seinfeld episode. I wanted to be, I wanted to come clean. Yep. Well, we're recording this episode early, as we mentioned, but what we're doing for this entire episode, we're throwing out the news Whatever. Whatever's happening in the Android world. We'll get back to that. Right now, we're going to talk about you. You've sent us tons of emails and voicemails, and uh, we are going to cover all of that, which we have. There's just tons that we haven't been able to do on our last five episodes, so we really want to bring it back to you. And we also have a grab bag in the arena. We have all of our own apps that we really like right now, so that's kind of a bonus. There's no theme. It's all about you. I got to say, we're, we're put into a pretty uh, nice conundrum in the mm-hmm. sense that um, we get a lot of emails. <laughs> I know, I love yeah, it. We get a lot of emails, uh, more more than I think I thought there, that we're going to come into our email. Mm-hmm. And so much so that it's hard to keep uh, keep track and keep tabs and reply back. So we thought, you know, we had to do an episode in advance. Why not just tackle a bunch of... And we're probably going to go through a lot of these uh, rapidly, but that's mm-hmm. just in an effort to try and address as many of these emails as possible. So, um, so hopefully, hopefully you like it. I, I think we've got a lot of really good good feedback and, and tips and all that stuff here. So, all right, cool. Well, let's let's dig ju- in. Let's jump right into it. Eileen, you go first. Okay, I'm going to start with Aaron from Oregon. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm going to start with Robert Shoesmith, who says, "So first, I want to say I love the show." Second, what apps you install, you first install on your phone that you know you cannot live without? Paid or free launchers? I'm going to go to you, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I can go ahead and take that. Um, so let's see here. What apps what do I install no matter what when I get a first phone? I mean, right now, I'm, you know, I'm pretty addicted to rooting my phone. And a lot of times that means starting from scratch to a certain degree on what you have installed on your phone. And I find that the very first things that I install on my phone would be Titanium Backup Pro. Absolutely. It's a backup program for rooted phones and it's indispensable. I use it all the time. Uh, Launcher Pro, which is another, it's a launch, a home replacement launching app. Um, that's just, uh, you know, I've, I've plunked down the small amount of money for it and I've just gotten so used to kind of the features that it provides. It's a really good launcher app and Android agenda widget plus, which is just kind of a calendaring widget on my desktop that I've gotten so incredibly used to seeing kind of what's upcoming travels and, you know, the schedule of work and all that kind of stuff, uh, without having to jump into a calendar app. So those are kind of the three that I would say that I install first and foremost. Foremost. What about you, Ron? My, yeah, I was thinking about this. I was thinking, what are my go-to apps? And every time I get a new phone, which ones do I immediately do? And you know, uh, you know, 
cutting out the Twitter and the Foursquare and all the social networking kind of apps and those we just have to, you know, like those are must haves. Um, Evernote is one that I can't live without on my phone now oh, for taking really? notes. Uh, barcode scanner is one I always make sure I have installed because I do scan a lot of barcodes, mm -hmm. um, as well as Chrome to phone, um, because I do a lot of web to phone kind of transferring of information. Um, food spotting is one I can't live without now. You see, it's funny because yours are all like using the phone and like launcher and stuff mm -hmm. like that, where mine are all like, yeah, you know, apps that I use that I want to make sure are on the phone before I head out. Um, <laughs> and then including, including Uber, I can't, I can't live without Uber, um, which is, what is just, Uber? Uh, Uber is it's, it, oh, it's it's San Francisco only, although they just launched in New York, um, and it's a service to uh, call cars to come drive to take you somewhere. So like, oh. it's, yeah, so it's okay, like I've not so much that. cabs. It's a little more expensive than cabs because it's like town cars and stuff like that. But it's awesome for like trips to the airport or like in San Francisco where it's notoriously bad to get a, a taxi. Yeah, uh, comes in really handy. Yeah. So. Oh, nice. Yeah. Awesome. Um, also, there's a there's one little mini kind of widget app that I use, which is Wi-Fi hotspot settings. Um, that's what it's called. You can get it there. And it's just a, it's a straight shortcut to your Wi-Fi hotspot settings. Cause I often use my phone as a hotspot a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I've got that right on my, on my, uh, home screen. And when I'm in the airport, I can jump online and stuff like that. So oh, great. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. And task killer. Ooh, before I forget task killer. That's, oh, a, that's a big one. We'll, we'll, yeah. we'll talk about that one later. Yeah. <laughs> we got some words about task killers. What about you? Who I do? does? Who's got some words? I do. do. Oh, okay. Well, an email does, but <laughs> I do by extension. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Robert. And uh, mine are pretty basic. I like um, Little Photo, which I uh, reviewed last week. I like, um, well, I'm still trying to find my favorite Twitter app. I went back to Twicka. I um, oh, had really? been You're using Seismic, but it's so slow to update, I think. What do you mean? What do you mean to update when to you update, post? When, when you make I, a post? No, when I just you know hit refresh. Um, oh it takes yes, forever you're right. Yeah, to I've upload. That. I'm like, hello, go go go. I'm just mm -hmm. I'm not very patient. I'd so I've gone that. back to Twicka. Um, I also you know this sounds <clears throat> kind of dumb, but I like the YouTube app. You know, without it, you know, mm -hmm. I kind of like using that. Um, Launcher Pro, I like a lot, and uh, Audible and AppBrain. I love AppBrain. You still use AppBrain? I do. And I think it's still the best to discover apps. Um, Chomp is out there, which is fine, but I've been discovering a lot of new apps using AppBrain. I think just because most everybody's on there. Hmm. See, and I found that my use of AppBrain has pretty much dropped through the floor. Really? Yeah. Well, you're you're what? a longer you're a longer Android user than I am, so that's probably why. I well, I don't know. I mean, I used it like crazy before the the Android market was updated, and then oh. once it was updated with the the latest updates, I don't know. I mean, for me, it was. It was finding apps and discovery on, on my computer. Now I can do that through the desktop. It's, mm. I just, it's like the first place I go now. Mm. I don't know. There's a whole social aspect, like you're saying, about AppBrain mm -hmm. that isn't included on, on the, uh, the Android market. And I can right. see that. I, just, I guess I never really got too tied into that aspect mm. of it. That's but. where I found Little Photo, by the way. So I kind of swear by it right now. I'm yeah. my lean TV on AppBrain. I'm probably Raygun01. <laughs> That's just what I am almost everywhere. Uh, all right. Well, let's do a voicemail here. 347 show AAA is the line if you want to leave us a voicemail. Uh, like Aaron from Oregon did. And this is uh, regarding streaming video from the desktop to the phone. Hi. My name is Aaron. I'm calling from state in Oregon. And I was curious if there was an app for streaming video, like from your desktop to your cell phone. Uh, if you can, let me know. Thanks. I love your show. Bye-bye. Yeah, I'm thinking kind of similar to uh, what we were talking about a few weeks back uh, yeah. as far as streaming music. Is there a video counterpart? I tweeted it out because I haven't used one myself, and I, I've heard little bits about Subsonic, which was the replacement that we mentioned following our, our discussion around music cloud streaming apps. And it's, it's a music streaming app, but it also, from what I understand, does certain types, certain formats of video. But I haven't used it, and I, I couldn't find any reviews about how well it handled those. Uh, Grant Garris 5 uh, n on Twitter said, uh, tried VLC stream and convert, which worked well enough, but a hassle to set up 
a VLC server that runs automatically, although it is possible to use VLC as a server. Schmidt DA says Orb works well. You can find that at new.orb.com. And actually, a few people on Twitter had mentioned Orb. So uh, I've heard I've heard good things about Orb. Actually, yeah. Oh, really? Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that was the first. That Orb and the next one you're going to say are the, the first two things that came to my mind. Okay, yeah. Uh, Rygavs uh, on Twitter said, uh, if you have a Mac, try Plex. And it works great, and it's constantly updated. I love to read that th that apps are constantly updated. It's just so yeah. cool when you've got a great app and it's being updated regularly. You feel like they actually care. Plex is, Plex is actually really, if you're a Mac user, Plex is a really, really cool kind of almost underrated boxy-esque kind of app. Um, and the fact they have an Android interface as well, they've got an iPad, they've got, you know, they've really kind of embraced mobile. Mm -hmm. um, I don't use it because it doesn't link up with the Google TV uh, in the way that I want it to, um, in that it doesn't support the file, you know, the file formats that I'm using to, to serve video to my Google TV. Mm -hmm. But if you, but from the phone, Plex is a beauty to play with. So definitely check that one out. Oh, cool. All right. Well, hey, you guys should check those out. Let us know what you think of them, huh? AAA at twit.tv, and we'll talk about uh, talk about your experiences uh, because I'm very curious. I, I don't know how much of a use I'd have this on a regular basis, not nearly as much as with music, but uh, it would be good to know what the alternatives are uh, for video. Absolutely. All right, another email? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Let's go for it. All right, our next email comes from Barry S. in Ramona, California. I've never even heard of Ramona, California. Um, but Barry says, great show. I really like listening and watching. He's somewhat new to Android and has a tablet. He wants to know, is there an easy way to change the folder icons on the home screen? For example, on his home screen, I have a, a folder called Games. But the game icon is a bland, generic image of a folder. It looks like the other folders on my home screen, which is the same except for that name. I have an Elocity A7 running Android 2.2 with the Dexter mod from XDA developers. Wow, he's new to Android and just dove right in with a mod. <laughs> um, Yay! It does, everything, it does everything I need for the price, and for the price is a great deal. Just the icons or lack of that really bother me. Keep up the great show, and I'll be listening. And I love it when we have a question that we can answer, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> that is right. Um, I did a little bit of searching and found something called Folder Organizer, um, which seems like it's really popular. It's four and a half stars. It's a dollar forty-four in the App Store, but essentially it allows you to do a lot of really cool customizing uh, customizations around your folders on your desktop. They also have another app that's uh, very similar called App or Apps Organizer, I believe. Mm -hmm. And essentially, what you can do with these is you can tag your folders or your apps and kind of give them categories categories that will allow you to do a lot of uh, customization Ooh, like from your home screen. screen. The one downside that I've kind of read about uh, about this is that because it's not because you're not using an actual folder that's built into the OS, sometimes it can be a little laggy in comparison. So you might click a folder and expect it to open up immediately and it might give you a beat before it actually opens. So there may be a little bit of lag, uh, but you know, also from what I've read, that lag is kind of uh, counterbalanced against the fact that it does cool things as a result. So, uh, there's, so always, there's always a price to pay for doing cool things. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It seems, unfortunately, but hey, we can do cool things, so that's cool in and of itself. So check that out. Uh, that is a folder organizer. Uh, you can find that in the Android market. All right. Going is back it, to voicemails. Yeah. Oh, is it me? Oh, yeah. Okay. See, I knew I was going to get lost. Um, well, let's let's see here. Let's do another email. Um, da -da 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 -da. Okay, this is a good one to talk about here, actually. This is uh, in regards to Game Loft. And uh, a person, George, or Geo, as he's called in this email, wrote in to say, hey, I recently contacted Game Loft uh, support department regarding reinstalling Android games that I had purchased from their website on my new Android phone. They're refusing to allow me to reinstall the games I had purchased from them, despite me sending them copies copies of my PayPal receipts for the purchase. Please help me warn other users of their policies. The letters are below. And he sends along the email uh, kind of thread that he had with uh, the Game Loft support. Essentially, he had an old phone. He bought a ton of their Game Loft games. And Game Loft, from what I understand, they don't sell their games through the Android market, right? I believe they don't sell them don't in the Android so, market. Yeah. I think you can only get them yeah. through their website. Yeah. So you're kind of playing by their rules when you do that. Um, and essentially, he gets a new phone, and they won't allow you to transfer it over. If it was through the market, it's tied to your Google ID. I think it would be kind of a no-brainer at that point. You enter your Google ID, you're able to reinstall the apps that you've already paid. But because you're going through them, they're trying to stem off piracy, and yep. you know, among other things, who knows. But um, 
you know, they, they just want to make, they can only go so far to be sure you are who you say you are. Uh, I did some searching online, and actually the story started to pick up a little bit of steam in some of the Android blogs. Uh, but I did find one, I believe it was on the Android Guys blog, um, and within the comments section, Geo had posted a follow-up. and We didn't get one at the email, but it's worth reading uh, just because he gives some good information. He says, uh, I called the toll-free number. Uh, listed and contacted GameLoft support line. At first, the customer service representative simply repeated the company line about not allowing users who changed their device or phone number to re-download applications that they paid for. But I rallied and insisted that he provide the software I paid for. I was courteous but insistent. And after a lot of back and forth, he finally relented. Good for me, but unfortunately doesn't change the horrible GameLoft policy. Customers uh, shouldn't have to plead for software they have paid for. Um, <laughs> So I guess, you know, a caution, cautionary tale. I can understand where GameLoft is coming from. They, they, don't ha they aren't necessarily in a position uh, to know whether you are who you say you are or that you did, in fact, get another phone when, in, in fact, it could be, you know, your wife's phone that you're just trying mm -hmm. to install a free game on or something like that. Um, at the same time, you should be very fully aware of this policy when you plunk down X amount of dollars for a game. And I don't know how much their games are. I didn't, didn't look that up, but I'm that. sure they're not super ridiculously inexpensive. They're high quality games. I know that about Game Off Games. So keep that in mind when you buy from them that it might not transfer to your next phone. And, um, and it's a good example as a lot of folks are saying in the chat room right now. It's, it's, this is another reason to have a backup solution in place. If you're, I, if you're, getting, if you're getting an APK file from a third party, uh, you know, third party provider, don't guarantee that you'll always be able to re-download it. Save those APKs on your desktop or you know, somewhere else so you can reinstall them on your next phone. That's, that's an excellent point, especially yeah. considering one of my apps that I spoke about at the beginning, uh, which is Titanium Backup Pro, which allows you to actually save, and this is for root users only, so this is maybe a benefit of being root, but you can actually save all apps, you can go through and just basically save all of your apps to an SD with their settings, and then you can restore those later. So if you're flashing your ROM and doing all these changes to your OS or changing a phone or whatever, it's very easy to then just take that and reinstall it using the software. So I imagine that would get around it. I thought you were going to say that you lost Titanium Pro because you couldn't restore it from a backup, and I thought that'd be very ironic. No, no. no, but no but Thankfully, that something. hasn't happened yet. <laughs> 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 Titanium Pro seems to be the solution, or any sort of other backup. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you get if you get your hands on the APK, store them. They're small files. They're easy to store. You know, and a lot of these different backup. A lot of them you can back up to the cloud, things like that. So that's mm -hmm. that's a, a a lesson learned. So. Excellent. Yep. All right. Who's next? Oh, you got to put on back, back to email. I'll, I'll take. The, I'll go next. Go ahead. Uh, go our, for it. Our next email comes from Lori from North Carolina. He says, "Hey, love your Android show, and I've got a couple of questions. The first, I thought when I activated the hotspot, hotspur, I'm guessing hotspot, it would just work. It would for 10 minutes and then stall, and then I tried to shut it down. It would shut off all my phone. I googled this question and found if you change channels in the event settings, it would help. There are 15 channels." Is there somewhere to figure out what channel to use? I lucked out on a second channel. Worked for me, but there must be some rhyme or reason to this. The second question is, is there a movie watching app on Android? So uh, so in terms of the, the hot spot, spot issue, uh, I'm not quite sure about that one. Um, in terms of being able to turn on the hotspot and be able to access it, was that the problem you're having? It sounds or, like that's the problem that she's having. And, yeah. you know, <clears throat> when you set it up, it'll... For me, it says like Android AP, and then you could rename it. So maybe rename it something that, you know, is personal to you so that right. when you go to find it, you'll know, oh, this one's mine. Because did, maybe did. what she did was she saw 15 other Wi-Fi hotspots. A lot of them were probably generic names or something. That, I think if this is what, if I'm reading it correctly. So I would rename when you go into um, hotspot, see if I can do that right now, and just rename it something that you remember that it's yours. Right. It's, it's basically like if you set up a router, it's setting up the SSID. Exactly. So if you know, essentially what you're doing when you turn on the hotspot is you're turning your phone into a router. And so you need to configure it the same way that you would configure a router. So you give it an SSID, you can add in protection. Like, for example, my hotspot is, um, requires a password so that not everybody can, you know, not everybody can use it. Um, although I guess I should turn off the password when I'm in the airport and be like a nice person. But damn it, I pay for that data. Yeah, so, that is um, true. Yeah, exactly. But go. um but yeah, so. so this is what I'm talking about here, <clears throat> giving your network a name and then, you know, giving it a password if you want. Uh, you don't want other people um, stealing your hotspot. But, you know, I actually just leave it Android AP just because I see it. But, you know, you can change it, whatever you want it to call it. 
Um, so I think that's what you're talking about, Lori. I'm not yes. sure specifically if that's incorrect. Please let us know. But you can configure it so you don't get lost and you don't, you know, um, lose. Yeah. But maybe she's like, no, that's not what I mean. Okay, sorry. Go ahead and if you can re-email us, that's fine. Yeah, email us less. I'll be glad to help you. And then the other question about is there a movie watching app on Android? We're desperately waiting Netflix. We um, are, but I think there's something called uh, Movies 2 and M-Spot. I haven't really used it yet, but um, there's an article that we have there yep. that says it joins the video on demand fray. Is it competition? And do um, Amazon, Apple, Netflix have any reason to worry? So I have not used this, but apparently you can rent trying to find it on here i've got i just oh, downloaded it on well i just downloaded it on my phone so this is what it, on the zoom this is what it looks like and then if you go okay i want to watch harry potter there rent so if i rent oh see i have to be a, a member but right. i believe you're able to um watch it on your phone yeah it, it yeah hmm. definitely it's a monthly subscription uh streaming service uh it, it works on your phone as well as computers and let's see here it's a 99 cents for new releases so that's not bad. Yeah, it's that's not, not bad, bad at all. Well, yeah. Harry Potter was three ninety nine. Oh, okay. Well, then this oh. is wrong. Yeah, so it's the app. <laughs> I wonder what's ninety nine cents. Yeah. So the apps are called. There's an app called Movies and Movies Two, and they're both by M Spot. <clears throat> I downloaded um, Movies Two. I think that's the new one. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm grabbing that now for. Um, interesting. They don't have a uh, tablet. Uh, a tablet version yet. Ooh, that's free what I'm movie. Trying to get. Yeah. So we have a free movie of the week, and it's Bruno with Gary Ooh. Sinise. And uh, Shirley MacLaine. Interesting. Rent. Well, I still have to get my account. Well, that's really interesting. So they've got they've got movies still in the marketplace, but in the description it says updated and enhanced app available as M Spot Movies too. Why yeah, well, not just think, remove yeah. movies? I guess because they've got like over a thousand reviews, so I guess they don't want to lose that. But yeah, that's kind of strange. Why would strange. you do that? Yeah, I don't well, quite anyways, get that. There you go. M, M Spot, what are you doing? <laughs> All right. Well, um, I can't even believe this, but it's time for a break. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we've bu we burned through our first half of, uh, of our feedback. So uh, this episode of All About Android is brought to you by Netflix. Netflix delivers movies directly to your home, and that saves you time, money, and hassle. You can instantly watch thousands of TV episodes and movies stream directly to your PC and Mac. Uh, stream to your TV with a Netflix-ready device, PS3, Nintendo Wii, uh, Xbox 360. You can also get DVDs and that old snail mail if you remember what that is, uh, in about one business day. You can watch as many movies as you want, anytime you want. There are never any late fees and no due dates. And uh, one movie that's mm -hmm. available, do either of you have a movie that you I would do. like to re recommend? I yeah. just watched Salt with Angelina Jolie You're the second night. person to recommend that movie that was on Netflix. It I heard was kick-ass. I heard it was awful. It was no, good? No, really? it was kind of kick-ass. It was, it was kind of, um, it kind of actually kept me guessing. If yeah. you like Angelina Jolie, she kicks some butt. It's great, yeah. you know, female empowerment, you know, all that stuff. But mm -hmm. um, it was it was enjoyable, and it leaves room for possibly a sequel at the end. Uh, it was not the greatest movie I've ever seen, but you know, for Netflix streaming, I thought it was you know pretty decent and good quality and um, wow. some good acting. So uh, it's you had it on a whim. I don't even like Angelina Jolie that much, but I really enjoyed this movie. So there you go. How's that recommendation? Hmm. Nice. <laughs> All right. We're going to check it out. We're going to check it out now. Right on. Um, well, cool. Well, you can instantly watch that movie. You can choose from uh, thousands of TV episodes. There's a bunch of TV on there, as well as other movies. When you register for a trial membership, go to netflix.com slash twit. That's netflix.com slash TWIT. Be sure to sign up for your free trial, and we thank you guys so much for your support of All About Android and uh, Twit. So Great. thank you. Uh, let's jump right back in. We Emails get or voicemail? Uh, or let's do a video. voicemail, actually. Okay. Um, yeah, let's, so let's see here. I'm just going to go ahead and play it because I can't find the name here, and I'm sure <laughs> I'll say it at the top. Hello, guys. This is Mr. Android with a question for you. That's what I meant. Um, with all the different ledger and finance apps out there, my real question is why are they always geared towards the bachelor user? Uh, myself, like a lot of other people in the world, have a joint account with my wife, and there's, with most of them, there's no way to sync between two different phones. So if we're using the same account, we have to each enter it on our own phone as it's going right now. Yeah. Interesting. interesting. Yeah, it's an interesting, uh, interesting question. I don't know if we necessarily have an answer, but it's certainly something that needs to be addressed if it isn't already. But I, I do agree, like any of the finance apps that I've used, yeah, it kind of treats it uh, from a single account and 
you know, I obviously do a lot of sharing with my wife, so. <laughs> well, it's good. Cool. Nice I thought you had an answer. I was like, oh, what do you do? No, no, no. I, I just thought it was, an, it was an interesting question that I haven't heard anyone ask. And uh, yeah. I, I don't know if, I, yeah, obviously I don't have an answer for this okay. one. But, but yeah. I wanted to give him a voice. So anybody listening that might know yeah. or might be able to change things. If you're the man, if you're the man and you can change things, change things. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. All right. Who's next? Okay, um, I'll go ahead and read an email, <clears throat> if I can find it here. This is from Eric in Atlanta. Dear AAA crew, I started listening to Twig about a year ago and have since picked up several other Twitch shows and have become quite the Google fanboy. I'm looking to upgrade my Nokia E71X to an Android when my AT&T contract is up for renewal next month. I would like to stay with AT&T. I guess you're going to get the Atrix. And I also want to stop carrying around an iPod and just use my phone. Is there a phone or an attachment that would allow me to transmit the music on the phone through my car's radio. I've done some looking, but haven't found much. And uh, I think, Eric, your phone is probably going to be the Atrix 4G. It's probably the best Android phone in the Android market or at AT and T um, currently. Um, <clears throat> and uh, you can actually get that little dock keyboard too, and have a little laptop going if you want. Um, and as far as listening to you, uh, you have the tip on this, right, Jason? As far well, as listening I mean, to um, your phone and your car stereo, which this is exactly what I do, but I didn't hook it up. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, all all I do, and I actually had to do a hack job on this, but it's possible on, uh, you know, on almost every stereo is yeah. just uh, have some sort of an auxiliary input and go in through the headphone jack. I actually had to go into the radio itself and attach a little attachment because it's a full unit that's built into the uh, the air conditioner and everything. So there's oh, no wow. way for me to take the radio itself out mm. and replace it with a radio that can have aux in. But I'm telling you, if I could do it <laughs> with that type of thing, it wasn't that hard. I'm sure you can too. I don't know your car stereo setup, but I mean, usually, or you can do Bluetooth or, or you know, some sort of a Bluetooth uh, method if you have mm -hmm. the right kind of stereo installed. Do, uh, do they still sell those FM transmitters that go through the headphone jack? Um, do you, you remember when, remember when iPods first came out? They had those. Yeah. It was like it was it plugged into the uh, mm -hmm. the stereo jack, but then went to a little box that was an FM transmitter, basically. Oh, okay. Um, you might be able to find that. That could work as well. I mean, there are solution. and there are plenty yeah. of headphone or yeah. uh, um, uh, FM transmitters out there that basically just broadcast out to an FM channel, and you t yeah. turn your tuner to that channel, and it picks Although up those, over the antenna. But eh, those FM transmitters nice. always make me want to throw them out the window. Yeah, me too. Like, like I have one in my car in New York, and I I've, I can't tell you how many times I've almost thrown it off a bridge as I'm crossing it over. It's like ah, it's yeah, like, it's like they do the trick, but they don't do it very well. Especially if yeah. you're an audiophile and you like the sound, you know, you're very particular about the sound of your music. Mm -hmm. um, you're probably not going to like that yeah. at all. I had a hard time with those FM transmitters as well, um, but I have the aux input and a um, one eighth inch audio jack. That's what I use for. Yeah, mm -hmm. I just attach hey, my little phone. The majority of the zip cars in San Francisco now have the aux input and a cable, so you plug your there iPod you that in. So, I think that's um, your best bet to get yeah. the, the the most clear uh, sound, and then you can play any audio app um, through your car stereo, yep. which is great. There you go. All right, is uh, Ron? Are you up next? Yes, I am. Go so uh, this one's uh, this uh, email comes from Eddie from Louisville, Kentucky, where I'm going to actually be going soon. I'm going to. Oh, Louisville. hey! Hey, there you go. Um, and he's got a question about the Zoom, which I've got here in my hand. And he says hey. he's really he's really surprised we haven't talked about this yet while sharing the Zoom. But he and many others finds it really unusable because there's no multi-user accounts on any tablet yet. There are, there are many scenarios where you need multi-users for tablets. Sharing it with my family, it's a pain that if my wife wants to pick it up and check her accounts, there's no easy way to do that. And if I want a friend or colleague to borrow it for a day or a week to try it out, I'd have to wipe it because I have so many of my personal accounts on it. It's Linux at the bottom layer, and you can have root access, so why not be able to lock down my info? I want to share. Um, and he provides a link where people can see more uh, more information about this issue. And he's right. It's, it's an issue. I mean, like on the stock... OS is whether Android, even on the iPad as well, tablets are paired to the individual user. I mean, like this, we have been, we've been sharing this, but when, when Jason gave this to me after I borrowed it, after he had it, he had to wipe all of his data and unlink his account and that yeah. sort of thing. And it's a pain in the butt. Um, yeah, so it I really could, is. I could see that, although I feel like the people making these tablets are assuming it's a single use um, use case. 
where they're saying, okay, this is going to be my personal device that I'm going to have everything on and all here. And they're not thinking for the, well, my wife is going to use it too, so let me hand it to her and let her log in like a laptop or a computer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but um, they, are, they are definitely two different types of devices. Your, mm -hmm. your phone yep. is your phone. You're probably carrying it around in your pocket. The tablet just kind of lends itself a little bit more to being shared around and maybe the profiles becomes more, more needed there. And that's a good point because if you look at Ant both Android and iOS platform, they were developed from phones and their phone platforms being ported to tablets. Mm -hmm. And so that's the, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if, if down the road in Android we see that get rolled out. Yeah. But luckily, some other folks have taken it upon themselves, haven't they? Um, well, well, I, this, this just kind of jogged my memory because I had yeah. been playing around with Cyanogen Mod 7 for a little while mm -hmm. on my phone. And there is actually a place in the settings where you can create profiles. So, And this is, yeah. uh, by the way, Cabby in the chat room is saying, Ron, settings to accounts and sync yeah. to add account. This is a little different. You can add accounts right. as, you know, as much as the day is long. I don't know if there's a restriction on that. But what that ultimately means is that if you borrow my phone that has my account, Accounts added on it. You not you not only have your accounts, but you also have mine. Mm -hmm. Profiles would allow you to log in with your ID and password and only have access to you, so that it's yep. sectioned off. You know, your stuff for you, their stuff for them. So it's a little bit different. Cyanogen Mod Seven does have that profile uh, feature built into it that I saw. I didn't play around with it because I don't really need to use it. But I could really see once once Cyanogen Mod and I give you know I'm totally positive that eventually probably will kind of goes into this whole tablet space uh, with the mods and honeycomb and all that mm. uh, that maybe that's one of the the big things at the top of the list would be profiles and added in and I mean really they should just be kind of being be adding that into uh, honeycomb in general anyways but maybe they have a reason a specific reason why they're not doing that I don't know it is a subtle difference though it's a subtle like yeah you're right you can add accounts and you can have multiple things on there but it doesn't protect your data so um, mm. Uh, it'll be really interesting to see, see if this gets adopted down the road. Um, but way to call it out. Yeah. So, I wish we had a better answer. Yeah. Uh, cool. <laughs> Do we have any other voicemails or you want to go for uh, one more email? Yeah, or? let's let's see here. I wanna I wanna there's a few emails that I'd love to get to. Um yeah. So let's see here. Dave Adams writes in. <laughs> this is very interesting. I just wanted to share something I, I just noticed about the Amazon App Store. My wife and I share oh. an Amazon.com account, and we both have Android phones. When one of us downloads an app via Amazon App Store and the other checks the My Apps area, we both have access to each other's downloads, which means paying for an app only once for two phones. So the only way to honestly pay for both is by downloading from different sources. Dilemma or bonus? Thanks. Uh, keep up the great work on your show. And... Uh, I hadn't heard anything about this. It's totally true. I got my wife's phone yesterday, logged into the Amazon App Store on her phone uh, with my ID, and sure enough, I got a pop-up almost like, you know, two seconds later saying there are eight apps, uh, you know, that you need to download that aren't on this phone. Would you like to do that? Um, so, I mean, I don't know. Well, I, it feels like an oversight, doesn't it? <laughs> or maybe they yeah. don't care? I, I don't I know. I mean, it's, it's, it's hard loophole. to know. Where, yeah, it's hard. It's hard to know where to go with this one. Yeah. I don't want to necessarily promote, you know, going on there and buying a bunch of apps and then getting it for free for as many people logging in. I don't want to tell them either. Well, yeah, yeah, we don't want to alert them to it either. Yeah, that's the now they're gonna know. <laughs> I gotta feel like it's an oversight. I gotta feel like it's something that they didn't they, that they'll get fix eventually. Yeah, um, I didn't believe it when uh, I read the email though. I was like, oh, yeah. no, that that can't possibly. But yeah, <laughs> kind of. I know. Works, I was excited so. that you tried that because <laughs> I was really curious too. Yeah. Um, but okay. I mean, I didn't really get anything for free. The only thing I've installed from Amazon are the free apps. So, mm. <laughs> so I didn't get away with anything. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Yeah. But now, now all of our listeners are going to, ah! now it's gonna be ruined. I'm sorry. You guys hate me now. I, I apologize. <laughs> it's really interesting though. Yeah it's, yeah. it's kind of, um, uh, it's the kind of thing that happens when, a uh, company, a big company scrambles to get something out. And I'm assuming it's an oversight. Maybe they want it in there, but I bet you someone at Amazon's like, ah, oh, what do we think about that? And so, mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Maybe they're not watching. I don't know. Maybe. Hopefully. <laughs> we give it away? Let's see how long it takes for that to get closed. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I've got another email here. Hey, Android gang, the Asus Transformer 10.1 Honeycomb tablet is coming out this Tuesday. It's already out because we're in the future. April 26th. <laughs> It's basically the same internal specs as the Motorola Zoom, but priced at $400, a lot cheaper, and has an IPS screen, same screen technology the Apple uses on their iPads. There's a $150 optional keyboard dock, which also has a battery to extend battery life to 16 hours if the 10-hour battery life of the tablet itself is not sufficient. I would like you guys to review, talk about this, as I think this is a great price for a Honeycomb tablet. 
and he gives us an in-depth review. I took uh, took a look at this. Um, you know, I bring this up because it is new, and we've been talking a lot about tablets. We can't really review it because we don't have one here. But, again, this seems really interesting. Uh, and when it first came out, I think everybody was like, crazy, crazy, crazy. This is, you know, pretty cool. But then the Lenovo yes. uh, tablet was just came announced. Along and trumped it <laughs> so... Um, and that is what four ninety nine. So this is the the lower base price to this is four hundred. This still looks good. I mean, it has honeycomb, um, uh, ten point one inch screen, one gigahertz Nvidia Tegra two. Uh, the memory is one gig. There's a sixteen gig and micro SD card. Um, yeah, I, I mean, comparing comparing this to the Lenovo, which was four ninety nine for pretty much the same specs and no removable storage, this might be the better deal. Mm. Actually, now that I compare the two, um, I really like the Lenovo, but um, uh, but given that this is you know this is priced that much cheaper, you know if you're looking for more bang for your buck, as long as you don't mind shelling the money out for the SD card for a 16 gig or 32 right. gig SD card, then you're mm -hmm. fine. So it's about yeah. the same price if you add the the keyboard. Yes, it's exactly. another 150. Um, yeah. But you know this one is the first one that came out of the gates at CES, and people were looking at it and thought, wow, this is pretty cool. Um, I still think this is a really good, I, I, w I really want to try it. So um, if I get my hands on one, uh, we'll certainly show it off. But uh, I think, you know, this still is a really good um, option. And But, you know, I think back to what you were talking about, Ron, and uh, branding with the ThinkPad. There you go. That's why yeah. the Lenovo might jump ahead. But, you know, we'll see. This is just new out um, and we have yet to see any real numbers or, you know, enthusiasm, talk about it, buzz. Um, but, uh, you know, time will tell, I think. Any uh, new uh, emails or voicemails? Where should we go? Yeah, Where should we go? Yeah, let's I go, got Ron. an email. All right, you got an email. Yay. All right, we got an email. It's a quick one. Uh, Anne wrote in uh, asking, uh, pointing out that the T-Mobile Sidekick 4G uh, is coming out. Recently, it's, it's already been released. It came out on 420, mm -hmm. and it's uh, finally got Android on it. So the Sidekick platform moved to the Android platform. Um, what are our thoughts on the new sidekick and uh, what, you know, whether we suggest it or not? Um, and for those who might not know, the T-Mobile sidekick has been a phone. It's been around for years, right? Um, uh, yeah. And really kind of social. And that was actually a sidekick. That was the, the phone with the flip kind of uh, mm -hmm. the, the flip screen. And Paris Hilton used it and all that sort of stuff. And yeah, mm -hmm. yada, yada. <laughs> so, um, so here are the pros of the, of the new uh, sidekick 4G. It's $99, uh, which, is, it's, which is a great price. Um, it's got a spacious keyboard, front-facing camera, and the typical Sidekick stylings that you'd expect from it. Um, some of the cons are it's got a uh, three-megapixel camera on the back, so you're not going to get the high-quality photos that you might get from another phone. And also the Sidekick overlay means that there might be delays in updating the rollouts because they've got all that Sidekick, you know, they're taking Android and sidekicking -ifying it. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a kind of a concern there. But ultimately, it sounds okay if you're into the Sidekick brand, if you've used a Sidekick phone and you want, you want to carry it carry it on. But if you're looking for more bang for your buck, there are better phones over at T-Mobile that you can use. Like the the uh, uh, G, G, the G2X is 199. That's got a dual core processor, so it's going to run really fast. Or the Samsung Galaxy S 4G is only 179. I mean, it's got a way better camera. Yeah, and I was so, looking for similarly priced $99 Android phones, and yeah. I don't know. It just at that point, it kind of makes sense to just pony up. Fifty dollars or seventy dollars yeah. more, and, and but for a, a student, lot more but for a yeah. student or a high school kid or something yeah, like that, I mean, you know, one hundred seventy nine dollars is a lot of money. It's true, I mean, you know, and so so ninety nine bucks <laughs> could be, you know, that's 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 less paper papers to throw in your paper route. Totally, so, yeah, yeah. And, you know, I've heard I've heard from people that you know that are big fans of just the sidekick thing because they definitely have their following and have for a long yeah. time that this is actually a pretty good phone uh, if if you just really like the sidekick experience as an Android phone compared side by side by you know to to other Android phones that are out there, it's kind of lacking to a certain degree. But, um, you know, maybe if you're getting a sidekick, you're not necessarily getting it just because of, you know, just for the Android aspect. You're getting it for the stylings and kind of the cool flippiness of it. And the keyboard, actually, from what I understand, is awesome. So, yeah. so I was trying to remember the, uh, the Sony phone that was really cheap. Wasn't it like $1 or something? Didn't I? We talked about that a couple of weeks ago. You know I seem to have about? forgotten the one dollar phone. <laughs> and we all made fun of it, but if we're talking about price, yeah, I don't know. But anyways, um, forget it. <laughs> I'm not going to go back in time for that. Yeah, one dollar <laughs> phones. Uh,
I'm, I'm going to go ahead with another email because yeah. this is one that I actually teased earlier. Um, this is uh, Stephen in San Antonio, Texas. He writes in, uh, thanks for the show. Quick question. I've seen various viewpoints about task killer apps being useless. Do you, <laughs> do you know if task killers are still useful for Android 2.2 and up? Maybe something you could use on the show. Thanks. Um, so I can give my own anecdotal experience with task killers, which is that when I bought my Droid, initially at Verizon, you know, a couple of years ago almost. Um, that was one of the, that was how they showed me how to install apps, right? You know, because they kind of do the whole, this is how you do things with it. So they downloaded a task killer app and I was like, well, what is this? And like, oh, well, this is how you manage, you know, your memory on your phone, you know, get rid of, of tasks that might be eating up your memory if it's yeah. going slow and all that. And I used it for quite a while, killing apps and, and everything. At some point I started to kind of see the, the, the uh, write-ups that basically say that task killers are pointless in the way that Android kind of runs its system and at some point I was convinced enough to uninstall it and I don't know if it's in my head or not but I, I honestly feel like my phone I like I, I just don't really notice much of a difference in the sense yeah. that it's not like things suddenly got worse um, and from what I understand uh, there's a life hacker article actually in here that'll do a lot better job of me explaining it. But just the way that Android manages tasks is different than the way that, say, a PC manages tasks. When you've got multiple, you know, multitask, multiple apps open on your PC and they're all taking up a certain part of your memory. What I understand on Android, that's not necessarily the case. If it's out of view, if it isn't doing something like updating and pulling content, syncing to your phone like a Twitter app or something like mm -hmm. that, it's not necessarily hogging this large clump of, of your memory that is not being released to the current app that you're working with. Um, and, you know, that's not necessarily, from what I understand, the reason that your phone might be slowing down. So I don't know if this is necessarily a be-all, end-all, you know, <laughs> denying that task killers uh, should be used or anything. I just know in my experience, I, I haven't missed it at all. I don't feel like you, I miss it at all. You know, it's, it's interesting that you brought up the psychological standpoint because when, at the top of the show when we were talking about what apps do we instantly install, and I'm like, oh, a task killer. Because going back to my G1, I've always installed a task killer to, you know, to manage both battery as well as uh, data. Um, uh, you know, because a lot of times, you know, having an application that's doing a lot of data and a lot of uh, hand, mm -hmm. handshaking and swapping will chew up your battery really fast. Um, not so much from the memory set aspect, but, you know, although early on with the G1, it was for memory. It's like, all right, well, I'm running these apps and I need more memory. Let me free it up. But for me, in my head, it's always been the, okay, well, I don't need that app to be polling all the time. Let me kill it. Um, and then that way it's going to free up battery because I'm somewhere, I'm in a nightclub where it's you know, the bad s s signal or whatever it is, you know, it might mm -hmm. be. But as you were talking, I've realized I never look at Task Killer anymore. Mm. Yeah. I just never, you know, I actually wonder whether I need it at all. Like, I wonder if I, if I got rid of it, if I'd be liberated and everything would be wonderful or if I would notice, you know, but like I haven't, I, I can't tell you the last time I've gone and I killed, killed an app. Um, and I've had some pretty dire battery situations recently where I'm like down at 9%. Like, can it make it till I get home? Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, but some, some, maybe they're right. Maybe there's something to that. that well, and Smojo it. points out in the chat room, he says, uh, task killers have their uses if you have a badly written app. And that, I think, mm -hmm. is kind of, True. kind of the point. Um, if you're killing something that, that isn't written poorly, it's probably handling the memory the way it's supposed to on the Android. And that's probably, it's not to say that there isn't something slowing your phone down, but it's probably not that app that you just decided to kill. Um, so there's, it's just, it's, it deals with RAM in a different way than your Windows machine does. And I know that this won't stop the, the discussion, but it seems like a lot of the people in the chat room are actually agreeing uh, with this. Yeah. So I would I would venture to say, you know, go, go, go a week without your task killer. Literally uninstall it because it might be automatically killing certain tasks depending on how you have it set up. And that could actually slow down your phone depending mm -hmm. on what task it's getting rid of. Um, so you never know until you try. I don't so use a task out. killer. I did before on the Nexus One, but I don't now. So yeah. I, I honestly don't beat. think I've, I've killed a task on my Nexus, uh, Nexus S since Did I've you? got it. Yeah, I haven't. So I'm um, going to delete it. I'm going to, I'm going to set, I'm going to set it. myself free. Yeah. No. Well, uh, yeah, do that. And then, uh, report in an upcoming episode and let us know if you've noticed any difference whatsoever. Hmm. Right. Uh, so I have an email, um, and I don't know, can we show this, um, Vegas photo? 
Oh, uh, well, well, talk and I'll, I will I'll talk. see if I can find hey, it. Hey, Android and this crew. This will be the last email, by the way. This is from Aziz in Las Vegas. Hey, Android crew. As an iPhone owner, I'm about to make the switch to a Motorola Atrix because while I love iOS, I'm ready to try something new. Good for you. Thanks to your show, I feel a lot more confident about dipping my toes in Android's water. And uh, with an iPad, I'm not too concerned about losing those paid apps. So uh, he goes on and he says, so thank you guys for making Android seem a lot easier. Um, and he says, as an aside, here's a photo of Google's NFC signs that are starting to pop up in Vegas. Ron, remember you made a call out? Oh, yes, I did. Because I'm still on my iPhone and waiting for the previously mentioned Atrix to drop in price, though it won't make a difference since it lacks an NFC. I thought I'd at least send you an image of what to look for when you're going around town with an excess. And Cheers. I'll go ahead and say for video you, uh, watchers, the signs aren't actually sideways. The image is rendering sideways for some reason. <laughs> Google doesn't do this strange thing where they like to go sideways to set themselves apart. Tilt your head 90 degrees. Yeah, exactly. Um, they make you really and it looks pretty negative. much as I would expect it to look. Yeah. So. Yeah. There you go. Cool. So thank you, 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 Aziz, for sending that out and for answering Ron's call. <laughs> there you go. Um, can we get one more email in, Yeah, please? go for it. Let's do one more and then we'll... Okay, quickie. Uh, this email comes in from Ernest, uh, who wrote in saying, um, Greetings, Android Twits. I have, I have a show idea. I don't know about a show idea. Um, but on show number one, the, you talked about the new Zoom is Wi-Fi only. I currently use PDA Net on my Droid phone to tether to my laptop. I'm wondering if it would be possible to tether the Zoom to an Android phone. Um, I would also be interested in knowing if a Wi-Fi only device could be upgraded in the future to LTE. Also, I'd really like to hear more about rooting Droid devices' advantages and disadvantages. All right, well, I'm going to address your first question, which is, can you take a Zoom and utilize a Wi-Fi hotspot on the phone? Absolutely, because as we said earlier, when you're using your, uh, your phone as a Wi-Fi hotspot, you're just turning it into a wireless router. So you can easily connect the Zoom to uh, your SSID that you're setting on your phone. So absolutely, could you uh, tether? It's not really tethering, and rather it's just using the wireless while using Wi-Fi as it's designed. Um, his other question is so whether or not a, um, a Wi-Fi only device could be up to, upgraded to LTE in the future. I'm not sure about that. I don't think so because I, I believe LTE is a chipset. Right? Yeah, I, I don't believe yeah. so. It, it, yeah, it's not I, a I would imagine update. it would require a different type of uh, antenna yeah. in order to even be able to transmit over LTE. Yeah, exactly. So it sounds like the older devices, if they're not LTE, you're kind of, you're stuck with that. So sorry about that. But yeah. you can use the Zoom with the Wi-Fi hotspot. So there you go. Yay. Sweet. I love answering questions. Yeah, no, this is great. <laughs> I, I yeah. wish we could have gotten to, uh, oh, to more. There's so many. I put in, okay, guys, I put in as many emails um, as possible. Comb through our um, Android show, uh, AAA at twit.tv emails. I have there's so, there's many. so many more that we're not yeah, going to have time for right now, but we'll yeah. save them and we'll all try right. and put them in other episodes. Yeah, on top yeah, of all um, the other emails we'll get. I was like, oh, this is a good one I want to answer. This is a good one. This is a good one. See, the, the tough thing about them is that a lot of them are very wordy and very complicated. It's like, well, I've got this phone. I want to do this. And can you do this? And it's just like, ah, so yeah. keep your questions short to the point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah well, exactly. I'm sorry if we don't end up addressing in one way or another all of your emails because, like I said, we get a lot of them. But we will do this type of show going forward. Yeah. I I think this is a great way to kind of address a lot of those questions and uh, hopefully you like it as well. Let us know either way, mm -hmm. aa at twit.tv. How about we move on from, uh, from all this email and contact and listener feedback stuff and we dive into the arena to enter one lives the Android arena. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't do that while the switch was happening. I know, yeah. Um, all right, cool. So uh, let's see here. First things first. Let me scroll up to the top here. Well, and, we can't uh, check the poll from last week because we just launched it. <laughs> uh, I, I suppose we could. We could kind of check a poll. <laughs> we could see, we could check in on the, the status. Early, of, yeah. what do you call it? The, the early voted. returns. <laughs> the early returns are pointing to Dog, dog catcher, catcher walking away at 81%. <laughs> but of course, there haven't been a whole lot of votes quite yet. Acast. Uh, yeah, nothing. Not, nothing. Not getting anything. Ron, you need to vote for AK. You're not voting. Oh, well, I voted for dog catcher, so there you go. <laughs> there you go. So, uh, anyways, we'll we'll check in on that uh, on the next episode once we're actually back, and we'll give you a twofer. We'll check up on that one as well as the next one, which uh, this week we figured things are a little bit different with all the comments and listener feedback that we've been doing. Uh, so why not do a grab bag? Do some sort of an Android arena where we're putting just whatever random app we have in the arena and see which one survives. No themes involved. So uh, I guess we'll start off with you, Ron. 
no theme whatsoever, and I went to the one app that I played with the most this past weekend. Wow. Which, uh, which I just, now I'm a little late to the game. I understand that it's been out for a while, but I finally found it. But um, I own a Google TV because um, I'm just so Google, you know, obsessed. Um, I own the Google TV, Sony, Blu-ray player combo. And I finally installed and discovered the Google TV remote app, and my world has changed because I've got a, I've got, uh, I've got uh, props here for you. So this is the remote for the, um, for the Google TV. Yeah, yeah. I don't like that remote. So, that that looks remote is un- and here's the thing. Un-plastic. I don't mind it. I don't mind it as really? much. I like yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. I it's have got- the Logitech Google TV. I actually like the keyboard, quite honest. The the big like keyboard. I I, yeah. I, I use it. I, we have the Google TV in the bedroom, so it just kind of sits on my lap and I type. Mm-hmm. I don't know well, so about that, that. You like it, Ron? Well, it's very. You hold it like this, and I, and so it's very uh, Nintendo controller. Yeah, it's kind of gaming. Yeah, it's got like buttons here, yeah. And, yeah, and this whole thing, and it's got um, it's got this interesting mouse kind of uh, trackball thing where you can uh, you can move the cursor around, and it's got a full QWERTY keyboard. Um, it can be a little annoying with trying to figure out how to get to you know shift and then. You know, shift and two to get the at sign, and there are all these colored buttons and all this kind of crap. But either way, it's it's an okay remote. It's not the best thing it could be. But considering that Google TV is made by Google and Android is made by Google, they came out with uh, Google TV Remote, which basically allows you to pair your phone um, or your Android device to your Google t- to your Google TV um, device, to your Google TV player. Um, it it works only works over Wi-Fi, so that's one limitation. So if you don't have a Wi-Fi network in your house, you, you're kind of out of luck there. Um, but once you've got Wi-Fi in, um, installed, you get all of the buttons that you can do, um, play, pause, forward, home, menu, all these sort of stuff, as well as the general directional uh, kind of up, down, left, right pad, as well as you can flip between the play control buttons and a trackball area. So you can move the mouse cursor with your phone by just, you know, kind of going like this and moving it around as, as if you're using like a trackpad. Nice. Um, super cool. And then I remember, and I have the Motorola Zoom. Oh, oh no. no. And, it, and it got even better. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened was I went from having this in my lap, in my hand, to having this, and actually having the remote. Now, understanding that the, that the Google TV remote is optimized for the phone. So it's not really uh, tablet uh, optimized yet, much less honeycomb. But that said, the space that you can, and I'm having a hard time, Oh, because my Google TV's turned off, so it's not working. But the space that you can access the buttons is way much bigger Whoa. here. Now look at that. It's huge. And then on top of that, you can you can go to the track panel area, which is not going to work because my Google TV's not turned oh, off. I was trying to update but yeah. you. Get, you get this whole entire top area for the trackpad, so it becomes much easier because that's been one of the complaints about using the, the navigational controls with the Google TV is that on a big TV, I've got a you know 46-inch TV, <laughs> Having this little thumb pad to maneuver around, it's a pain in the butt because you're constantly going like that. With the Zoom, it's I've got full weight range of motion. It's completely changed the way I use the Google TV in the browser and that in the device. So talk about such a simple little thing that Google could do by enhancing one of their products. And you've got to like dig and you've got to be like a Google TV enthusiast to find it. But um, for those of you with the Google TV out there and you have an Android phone or a tablet, definitely a Google TV remote. You're not going to be able to live without it. So. How, how difficult or how easy, rather, was it uh, to set up? Because I know I've, I've seen, so, so. I've seen like, uh, like remote apps for the phones to yeah. where if you have like VLC running on your PC and you've got that plugged into your computer you know, or your, uh, your TV screen in the living room, you can get a VLC remote and you know, control it. But it's always kind of a pain to kind of get it to sync up. Is this pretty easy? So simple. What you do is you got to make sure that you got to make sure that you have a wireless network. You got Wi-Fi. That um, the Google TV is of course turned on. When the app loads up, it searches the network for Google TV device. Google TV device and says, "Is this your that's device?" Smart, and it comes yeah. with the the device ID, which is a bunch of garbled numbers. It's the only Google TV in my apartment, so I'm like, "Yes, that's the one." And then what happens is that then the Google TV device on your TV comes up with a parent code, um, similar to the way the Apple TV does it. Mm-hmm. So you get this four-digit um, code that then you enter into the uh, into the app, and then all of a sudden now the app is paired with the device and it works. So it's super simple, easy to do. Um, had it set up in less than a minute. So very nice. cool. I just downloaded it, Ron. So yeah. I will try it uh, later tonight. It's I'm having finished. fun with Google TV because HBO Go is on it already. And um, you get all the on-demand if you're an HBO subscriber, so that's kind of... Can, can you make sense of Game of Thrones? Because I don't know what the hell's going on on that show. I can kind of make sense of Game of Thrones. It's like a really boring Lord of the Rings. You don't like it? Oh, I so think it's interesting. Like, 
Wow. And, uh, you should talk I, to Tom. Yeah. I haven't, I haven't said anything on Twitter yet because I know I'm going to get slammed for it. I'm not saying it's bad. Yeah, I don't it's think good. you'll get slammed. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> okay, maybe you will. <laughs> maybe. Probably. It's possible. By somebody, you'll probably get slammed. Yeah. No, but the Google TV is so much fun. I use it now. Now that, remember, Jason, we were talking, I was trying to figure out how to get the DLNA thing to work, to yeah. stream. Mm. Um, I've got that working now. Um, so it's like I've completely moved off the Apple TV and I'm on the Google TV. So um, nice. I love it. Yeah. Awesome. So this, this makes it that much easier to use. So. Great, I like that. Um, and and it's interesting that even though the app is is optimized for a phone, it actually works really well at the tablet oh. size. And then you know, you know what it they don't all, me? always work that well. <laughs> I will admit that it does remind me of those big oversized button remote controls that you could jokingly get for your parents when they're getting older. <laughs> you know, like those they sell them at Walgreens with oh. big remotes with the big oh, buttons. It, it's a little bit like that, but the trackpad area is enough for it, and also the keyboard access. Ta being able to use the, the tablet keyboard versus this little click you know you know chiclet keyboard is way better so yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Cool. All right. Well, I'm going to dive into uh, into my app, the second app today, and it is called. It's probably an app you've never heard of. I'm I'm going to go out there and say you've probably never heard of Pupil, P U P I L. I you like your eye. Yeah. Like your eye. Um, so this is something that uh, that I ran across over the weekend, and I tweeted it out to kind of gauge interest to see what people thought of it. I thought it was kind of a cool little idea. So basically, here's what it is, and I'll uh, switch over to the app here. It's this little eye. Uh, launch, launch into this. Pupil is a little bit like Google Goggles. Google Goggles allows you to take a picture of something and then submit it as a search, and Google will match it and give you results. Pupil is similar, but what it is is it's a way for you to take pictures of something and then post it to in a social realm and mm. ask people to tell you what this is. So you might, and so you can basically, and it's taking a little while to log in. It's kind uh, of like a game? Uh, they, they have made a game component out of it. I haven't figured out exactly how it's a game. I, there's, there's a page in there where you can kind of see your ranking and, you know, as you go along and you help other people with a picture that they've taken, you can, you know, basically be thanked for it and that raises oh, your bar a little bit i um, see like just asking questions like what is this tree exactly you know, i see i see okay. exactly and you know and, and i thought this might actually be uh be handy you know google goggles is great but it doesn't catch everything mm -hmm. and it might not catch the uh, subtleties of whatever it is you might be asking so i finally got it to log in here and i blame the uh, local wireless because it can be a little iffy <laughs> in yeah. this building but so here it is pupil press to pupil so you press the eye it asks you, you can you take it from your gallery or you can take it from the camera. I happen to have two camera apps, so that's why it's asking me twice. But essentially, it'll pull it up and it'll pull up my camera app. And <laughs> this is a horrible picture, but I'm not going to move it. What is um, that? be like, yeah, totally. <laughs> so I'll take a picture of this. It's, it's just pointing down to the desk. And, and hopefully my phone is fast enough to allow me to okay that. So it takes that image and it'll pop me out and um, show me the image and allow me to kind of ask a question with it. Um, I, I think you can just take an image. It's stretching it out, but it corrects itself when you submit. I think you can just take an image and not submit a question, but obviously you're going to uh, get a better answer. Uh, let me see here. How, how many chords? <laughs> Someone's going to get this and they're going to be like, what was this guy smoking? <laughs> uh, okay. How many chords? So basically it's going out there and other pupil users will see this. Yes, right? other people that have it installed. And you can also get notified by email, which I do, so that you see it come through. You hit next. Uh, select a tag to connect your query to the best pupil in our network. So they have all these different tags. And when you sign up, you go through and you check off the things that you think you could answer questions to. So I don't know what this would even fall into. Technology, Probably right? electronics technology yeah. and uh, how about other, although I, I would guess that you probably wouldn't get too much, of, you know, as much of a response Shooters. from other, but we'll just go ahead and do that. And then you pupil it. So basically what I'm doing is I'm sending this picture out there with a very specific question and asking people that have indicated that they belong to that group what the answer is. Um, and so I'll go ahead and switch back over here and show you some of my questions. My questions up here, these are questions that I've asked, and I've been really surprised with the results because obviously the, uh, the success of an app like this is how many people are using it. Mm -hmm. And I wondered that when I installed it, because it's a very new app, it hits the app store like you know less than a week ago and it has very low install on it. But the first question I asked is, at does twit stand for? Because I misspelled what. Uh, <laughs> what does twit stand for? 
And I send it out, and literally within a couple of minutes, I started getting answers. And these are all answers to the question. Oh, and everybody's answered that? Everybody's answering it. You know, This Week in Tech is, is some of the answers. Some people talk about Leo, whatever. Um, so you can go through here, and you can share the answer. You can give thanks for the answer that you like the most. Um, I, I tweeted the, or I, I uh, what, what would you call it? I pupiled, pupiled <laughs> uh, these two at my house right before leaving for work. The first one is, is there a name for this kind of weighted window mechanism? And it's this little pulley thing, if you see the photo up close. And this one person actually replied with a lot of really good information. This kind of window is called a sash window, which is very common in older Victorian style houses, blah, 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 blah. So I gave a thanks. Uh, what kind of plant is this? Because it's a plant in our house. And sure enough, I got an answer within like a half an hour this looks like it's a red calla lily also known as a blah 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 so it's just kind of a cool way to kind of take a picture of something that you maybe think you know it might be hard to find an answer of otherwise or just on a whim and see what you get um, and then you can also the other side of this of course is responding to questions so I could go into the respond area I also get emails automatically from people that have posed a question these are all categories I've set up for myself and if I let it uh, load up, I can kind of get picture after picture of questions that have been asked. I have yet to find one that I can really offer a really good answer to. Really but, cool. um, you know, they kind of make it a little bit of a game and, and allow you to kind of, you know, spend your time going in there, um, answering questions and hopefully kind of raising your level for whatever the benefit of that is. Like this, uh, cool. this, key, this keyboard says, what brand is that? And I would guess that it's Taipan or Taipei or, <laughs> or something, but I don't really know the answer. And then finally, here's the community. This is where you see uh, your points, your grade. Oh, you get points. But I haven't been thanked because I haven't Ooh. answered any questions. Uh, so that's it. I mean, that's that's, that's pupil. That's kind of fun. Yeah, it's. I like it. I downloaded it, Jason. There you oh, go. did you? Mm -hmm. I just did. You're now part of the community. Well, I have to part get of the... my you know username and all of that stuff. Yeah, right? yeah. No, but... it takes a little bit of time, and you know, it's a, it's a version one app. So undoubtedly, you know, there there are little hangups here and there. But I thought it was just kind of cool, and I honestly expected for it not to be very successful in some of these questions. And I was very pleasantly surprised. It seems like people are kind of actively involved with it. So okay. uh, I don't know what category it falls under, but check it out. Pupil Might in Android Marketplace. Social networking game. Game, gaming, social you gaming, know, maybe? Or, wherever yeah, Google but, Goggles would be, probably, right? Yeah. It's, also like, it's like user-based search also, kind of, to a degree. Kind of, so, yeah. Yeah, interesting. I do. I have some plants in my backyard. We rent our house, and I'm thinking, like, what, what is, is that? <laughs> I have no idea. Now I'm going to use that. I do have legitimate questions. Yeah. So it can, uh, help, awesome. it can help with IKEA pieces when you've got like that extra piece left. Oh, and be like, what yeah. is this? Where does this go? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's a what good is idea. This a piece too. It sounds yeah. to me like there's a lot of people in there already answering questions. It seems like there's a yeah. good community already. I mean, That's and great. it's so new. Like I said, I was just surprised to get as yeah. many answers as I did. So That's fun. hopefully like that it. stays and, and grows, and we'll see. Cool. All right. Well, uh, what do you have, Eileen? It's a very simple app. And for those of you out there who are like me, who listen to music and just butcher the words all the time because you <laughs> don't really know them, um, this app might be for you. And I say that so you don't annoy people when you, you know, sing a song. It's completely the wrong lyrics because you just you just don't know. And I hear differently, so yeah. I create I create lyrics where they're not really. Uh, supposed to be. So uh, I have Lyrics app, which is free. I think this is an older app, but I, you know, I just discovered it. Uh, it works with a lot of the stock music players like uh, Double Twist, Songbird, Real Player, Player Pro. Uh, so it won't work for audio if you use that. Um, I don't think it's going to work for Audio Galaxy, unfortunately. I'm not quite sure. It says and more here, but I don't know what the and more is. So I'm using Double Twist, and I'm going to play this Arcade Fire song right now that you can't hear. But that doesn't really no, matter. No, no, I'm going to play no, that. No, no. And you know, That's, I don't really know that, the words. Is that okay? Mm. <laughs> so there you kind go. of arcade fire. There you that go. Was very funny. I don't really know the words to this song, and I don't want to butcher them anymore. So what happens is when you install it, you see up here in your notification bar this little um, note. And uh -huh. there's lyrics app, arcade fire. Hope it works. Crossing fingers. Oh. Stay on target. Boom. And here are the lyrics. And sure enough, it really is the lyrics to this song, The Suburbs. Yeah. It has song, actually way, worked like yes. for all of my songs thus far. Oh, uh, okay. And it has, you know, um, been able, I think it just picks up from, you know, any of those lyrics. Um, if you go on the web and you do a search, one of the, you know, there's tons of lyrics 
websites and it picks it up from there. But I've been pretty impressed. And so in a pinch, if you don't know the chorus, or if you just want to learn that one verse, the lyrics app is for you. Mm. I like it because I, as I've mentioned, I butcher songs all the time. So if you're like me, you're going to want this one. That's part of the fun, the, you know, like the, the, the great classic Jimi Hendrix, like, uh, please excuse me while I kiss this guy mm -hmm. instead of kiss this guy. Yeah, <laughs> right, so, right. So. Well, and blinded by the light. I mean, yeah, yeah. how many times have we tried to sing that? Wait, what did he say? <laughs> so, so really it's an app that just kind of works in, uh, in, conjunction. in conjunction with other music apps that you might have installed on the phone. Yeah, I've, re nice. I've been using it quite a bit because I've messed up lyrics to songs and I sing all the time. So there you go. That's why I'm annoying. Okay. Um, and I just wanted to do a really quick update to an app that I had featured, I think, in one of our beta shows. It's called Pocket Booth. And um, it's $1.99. And it's only available at the, in the Amazon App Store. And what it does is that it takes photos. Um, now, it allows you to use, it does it like a strip. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm like taking my phone out of the shot here. But um, I'm going to take four photos. There's Jason. Oh. Uh. Here you go. Ready? One. Here's another one. Two, three, and one more. All right. So it's going to wow. create a little um, creative. Yeah. Creative posing. Well, the biggest the biggest change to this app, and here's the photo, is the fact that you can now use your front facing camera. Before you couldn't when it first launched, and I was kind of disappointed. And I said, don't download it. But now I could say you can download it. It's really fun if you want these strips, and then you can make these black and white sepia. Yeah. Blah blah. blah. But so that's the biggest change is that if a lot of phones are having the front facing camera now. Uh, I do think it's worth it. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. Good, <laughs> Good update. Cool. Um, all right. So let's see here. You can now have the opportunity. That's right. You. I'm talking to you. You can have the opportunity to vote for your favorite of this hodgepodge of apps. <laughs> so go to. That are unrelated in have, no way, shape, or form. Unrelated in every sh way, shape, or form. Pull.cm slash 1185. Pull.cm slash 1185. Vote for your favorite episode or favorite uh, app from this episode that's Pupil, Lyrics, Google TV Remote. Very curious to see uh, what the answer is on this one since they're all over the place. But um, I think that's it. I oh, my think, God. I think, that, I think wow. somehow we made it. And I really, really enjoyed uh, being able to talk to, talk about all the, the emails and voicemails. And I'm really, um, I think we'll do this again. And I, you know, sure. we've saved the ones that we haven't, we weren't able to answer. Um, so we'll go back and, you know, unless the question is moot. And well, yeah, we're, we're also going to get a lot of emails and voicemails. Uh, from now until the next time we do an episode yeah. like this. But maybe we check in on an episode like this every, you know, five or six episodes mm -hmm. and kind of change things a little bit. And, yeah. You know, yeah, I was going to say, uh, like six questions. episodes feels right. Like every month and a half, check in with the, check in with the audience. And yeah. A little That's grab it. bag of, uh, yeah. of apps exactly. and all that. So. I like that. Cool. Good idea. Awesome. Well, Ron, uh, we're, we're on your shot. So why don't you tell us where people can find you? All right. Well, you can find me on Twitter. I'm uh, at RonXO. That's R-O-N-X-O on Twitter. Or you can go to my website, ifanboy.com, where we talk about comic books all day and night. Or check out graphically.com, which has an Android app. You can read comics that way. So, uh, yeah, that's where you can find me. Right on. Thanks, Ron. How about you, Eileen? Uh, you just find me on Twitter, at Eileen TV. And you can find me on Twitter. I'm at Raygun01. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to All About Android. Uh, don't forget you can be a part of the show by sending us an email at aaa at twit.tv. You can leave us a voicemail at 347-SHOW-AAA. Hit us up on Twitter at Android Show. And you can watch us live every Monday from 5 to 6 p.m. Pacific at live.twit.tv. Thank you so much for tuning in on this week's episode of All About Android. We'll see you next week. Bye.